Today we're talking about not seeing things that are right in front of us. Hey, that's great. Have you seen my band cap? I've been looking for it for the last half an hour. I went in the room the other day. everyone, Happy New Year and welcome to Kamsa Connect, your weekly worship service from Cambridge Citadel Salvation Army here in the UK. We hope you all had a good break over Christmas. It's good to be back with you in this new year, which, as we've just seen, is a new year to worship, filled with hope and blessing. So we hope that's the case for you. Well, in the church calendar, we're in the season of Epiphany, where we think about God revealing himself and making himself known to us. So our theme today is, here he is. And we'll be looking at how John the Baptist and Jesus' first disciples recognised him. Coming up in today's Kamsa Connect, Faith is going to tell us about times she has recognised the presence of God in her life. We've music from our senior band. And Norman is back, of course, with his update. And he'll be talking about New Year's resolutions. So let's get this new year started as we mean to go on by praising God and giving him first place over all things. Please join us in singing All Creatures of Our God and King.
Well, thanks for that good sing, everyone. In a moment, we'll hear this week's Bible verses read for us. We'll have music from the band and, of course, Norman's update. First, though, please join us in a New Year's prayer. Father God, we thank you for the year that has passed, for the things we have learned and challenges we have faced. You have been with us through it all. Lord, we thank you for new beginnings too. As we look ahead to the coming year, we know that with you, it is a year full of hope and potential. Help us to see you in all that takes place over the coming months, and may we be faithful this year in every opportunity you bring us. In, in Jesus, Jesus' name, name we, we pray. pray. Amen. Amen. John testifies about Jesus. The next day, John saw Jesus coming towards him and said, Look, the Lamb of God, who takes away the sin of the world. This is the one I meant when I said, a man who comes after me has surpassed me because he was before me. I myself do not know him, but the reason I came baptizing with water was that he might be revealed to Israel. Then John gave his testimony. I saw the Spirit come down from heaven as a dove and remain on him. And I myself did not know him, but the one who sent me to baptise with water told me, The man on whom you see the Spirit come down and remain is the one who will baptise with the Holy Spirit. I have seen and I testify that this is God's chosen one. The next day, John was there again with two of his disciples. When, the, when he saw Jesus passing by, he said, Look, the Lamb of God. When the two disciples heard him say this, they followed Jesus. And turning around, Jesus saw them following and asked, What do you want? They said, Rabbi, which means teacher, where are you staying? Come, he replied, and you will see. So they went and saw where he was staying and they spent that day with him. It was about four in the afternoon. Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, was one of the two who heard what John had said and who had followed Jesus. The first thing Andrew did was to find his brother Simon and tell him, we have found the Messiah. That is the Christ. And he brought him to Jesus. Jesus looked at him and said, You are Simon, son of John. You will be called Cephas, which when translated is Peter. <laughs>
Thanks to Annie for bringing us the Bible reading for today. And I do hope you enjoyed listening to the band playing Stand Up For Jesus. Hello everyone. Happy New Year to you all. Did you make any New Year's resolutions? And have you kept them? I made one years ago. Not to make any more New Year's resolutions. And you know, it's the only one I've ever kept. <laughs> You may remember before Christmas, we were appealing for help with our Be A Star appeal. 54 agencies made referrals to us, and I'm pleased to be able to tell you that, with your help, we were able to provide food parcels for 230 families. Additionally, we provided toys and gifts for 641 children and young people. We are so grateful for your help with the donations you made, not forgetting to thank the team of willing volunteers who prepared all those gifts to be distributed. And talking of where there is need and how we can all help, you may recall that we had two Christmas concerts last year and these raised the sum of £820 towards our core funds. This enables us to continue making a positive difference in the lives of others. As you know, we post many events on our Facebook and web pages, details of which are in the video description below. And next month, we shall be having a special concert in our hall in Tennyson Road, Cambridge. And this is to be given by the Salvation Army's Household Troops Band. They are coming for two reasons. The first is to celebrate the 90th birthday of Major John Mott, who was leader of that band for over 25 years. And the second is to raise funds for our recently completed building scheme. So, make a note of the date and time, which is February the 11th at 7pm. Details are on screen right now. Finally, I would remind you that each Sunday there is a service in our hall in Tennyson Road and you are warmly invited to share in worship with us at 10.30am. We look forward to welcoming you if you are able to come along and share with us. Now it's time to give to the Lord in our offering. Thank you for your giving in the online offering. This is much appreciated as it helps Cambridge Salvation Army make a positive difference in the lives of people in our community. And don't forget, if you are unable to use the QR code, we always list other ways to support in the video description below. That's right. Well, in our next segment, we're going to delve deeper into the Bible passage that Annie read earlier for us. First, though, we asked one of our leadership team members, Faith, to share about times she has encountered Jesus in her everyday life. Here she is. Martin has asked me to speak about my encounters with the Lord Jesus. I can't claim to have had any startling or amazing visions or revelations. I often wish that that could have been my experience. However, I can relate to times when I have felt his presence very near. When in deep prayer for family and loved ones during serious traumas, he gives comfort. When asked to do something that I thought impossible, finding that he gives me strength. When I get a sudden unexplained thought that I must do something or make urgent contact with somebody, 
and then find that it was appropriate and necessary. Not just coincidence, a message from him. At other times there have been opportunities and leadings which I cannot attribute to my own initiative. These have involved deep and personal experiences that must have come from the Lord. So how do we recognize him? In saintly people, in unexpected urges, in a sense of his presence. Whatever it is, we must be open to him. We must trust him to comfort and guide us. I quote significant words from Song 1008 in our songbook. Lord Jesus, thou dost keep thy child. Through sunshine or through tempest wild, Jesus, I trust in thee. This life of trust, how glad, how sweet. My need and thy great fullness meet and I have all in thee. Amen. How many of us have ever been in a situation where we look at someone and think to ourselves, I'm sure I know that person, but we just can't place them. Or sometimes we have people come up to us and say, hello, lovely to see you again. And we smile and we reciprocate, all the while having a panic inside because we have no idea who they are and we don't want to embarrass ourselves, but also them by saying, we have no idea. It's awful, isn't it, when that happens? Well, at the start of this particular passage today, there is no mistaking who John is talking about. And he says it in such a way that there can be no mistake for all of those who are listening. Look, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Here he is. This is the man I've been talking about. 
I told you that he would be the true light and would bring light to everyone. I told you that he would be the one who would give you the right to be called children of God. I told you that God himself, the word, had come to be among us and that we would see his glory. Here he is. And John the writer is making it very clear exactly who Jesus is. He is the Lamb of God. So he starts his gospel by saying that. And Tom Wright says that he indicates at the start of this gospel story how things are going to end and why. Jesus is to die a sacrificial death for the sins of the world. He will make the sacrifice for us so that we don't have to, so that we go unpunished. So the next day then, we hear the same thing from John the Baptist again. Look, the Lamb of God. And now we start to see the change that comes about when people meet with Jesus, when they recognise who he is. There are two disciples listening to John the Baptist. And when they hear who Jesus is, they start to follow him. And the conversation that follows ends with them spending the day with Jesus. Wouldn't that be wonderful? And we are told that Andrew, who is one of those disciples, was so impacted by what he saw and heard that he went to find his brother Simon. Listen to what Andrew says to Simon. We have found the Messiah. There's no mistaken identity here. There's no wondering who this is. No thinking to themselves, well, I'm not sure. Have we met before? There is recognition from John the Baptist. Look, from Andrew, we have found. And they are not only content to know it for themselves, to recognize Jesus for themselves, but they tell others. John the Baptist makes an exclamation. Look, you can imagine that, can't you, being a grand pronouncement, a bit like the town crier. Pay attention, this is important. And what about Andrew? Well, he goes straight away to his brother and brings his brother to Jesus. Come and meet him for yourself. So what are the things then we learn from this scripture? Well, number one, Jesus is the Lamb of God and he has come to take away our sin. He has come to sacrifice himself for us so that we won't be punished. Number two, it's important to recognize Jesus for who he is. He is the Lamb of God, the Messiah. And number three, it's important that when we do recognize him, we tell others about him, even bring them to him so that they can recognize him for themselves. So as we listen to the next song, may that be our prayer that we would indeed have eyes open to recognize Jesus for who he is, the Lamb of God who has taken away the sin of the world. And not only that, but be willing to tell others and bring them so that they too can recognize him for who he is. Please join us in a prayer. Lord Jesus, open the eyes of our hearts so that we see you today and every day in this coming year. 
Send us out into your world with new eyes to see you when we look for you, to recognise you where we least expect you, and to love you wherever we find you. In your name we pray. Amen. And amen. Well, thanks everyone for joining us today and thanks for your support joining with us for worship every week. Do like this video if you did and don't forget to leave us a comment below to tell us where you're from. We love hearing from you. Also, don't forget to subscribe to us here on YouTube and click the bell icon too. And you can also link with us over on Facebook where we post updates on things that are going on at Cambridge Citadel Salvation Army. All right then, well, as we conclude this week's worship, we'll join in the singing of a song which directs us to tell the nations all around of the Saviour we have found. Until next week then, keep safe, keep well. And keep connected. God, God bless, bless you. you. Thank you.